My name is Mike Wallace. My quilt is called Four Generations, One Family. Well, it started off as an entry for this competition and the idea was four columns of fabric um, quilted and coloured in different ways. And when I was looking through my stash for fabric to use, I came across an old sheet and it turned out that it was a family heirloom with four darns on it and a family monogram going back three generations. Uh, and I thought, hang on, this could be used. And so from four columns it became one column and the four uh, darnings on it became a feature of the quilt. And that's how the whole thing started. And I've adapted therefore the title of the whole competition to, re to fit my piece or my piece to fit the competition. The challenge of making it was to make a feature of the darnings and the sort of history behind it and the family monogram. Uh, my family, just as a sort of bit of background, my mother comes from Austria, my father comes from Germany, both fled from uh, the Nazi persecution and came to this country. And the things that they brought with them were quite astounding, apart from porcelain and china and the everyday today things. They brought sheets. Uh, one branch of the family brought a rose, which is a rose cutting which has been planted and is still going today. Uh, and one of the things was this sheet, which clearly, if you look closely, has had enormous use. And it reflects also the way society's changed because the fact that people were sleeping on sheets that have been heavily darned it's just something that wouldn't happen today. We're in a throwaway society, but they weren't, and everything was used and reused and reused again. So that, uh, to me, was a piece of family history, and it was that family history and the way society's changed that created the inspiration for the piece. It started off as white. I then colored it with Procyon MX dyes, mainly applied with a credit card. Um, just scraping the colour in and then once I'd done that and avoiding doing any damage to the darns I then had to decide how to quilt it to make a feature of the darns and the uh, monogram rather than trying to hide them and so the, a lot of thought went into the lines of the quilting and the use of uh, photographs, photocopying. So I took photographs of it in its sort of early stages and then played around with felt pens to mark lines and eventually settled on these sort of gentle curves highlighting the features and if you like framing the bits that I wanted people to focus on. And I deliberately kept the, su the colours subtle because I didn't want anything to detract from those key features uh, of the darning and the monogram. It's definitely pre-war because both my parents came to this country in sort of the, the late 30s. So it's probably a sheet from the 30s, about 1930s. Uh, so it, it's got some history behind it. And another thing that links is that it's definitely be used by four generations of the family. My grandparents, my parents, myself and our children have all slept in this sheet before it was consigned to my stash. It's a bit of a long story but my wife was doing a diploma in art at Brighton University over four years and I went and saw her work at the annual exhibition they held and there was some book binding and I was fascinated by that so I went on a book binding course after I retired at West Dean College and at the same time a course was going on run by a lady called Jay Maris called Experimental Stitch Textiles and that looked fascinating the results of that work and that caught my imagination so a year later it was only run once a year I went along um, as Jay said I was her first man and I think she really needed to find a different way of saying that um, and it just grew from there and I was very lucky to find people like Committed to Cloth, Leslie Morgan and Claire Ben and had some very very good tutors and it's just a bug that's bitten me 
and taken me into areas which I would never have dreamed I'd go into, including now tapestry weaving as well. So anything to do with threads and fabric, fascinating and I love it. I think like any form of art, and my wife paints, it's actually a very solitary activity. You're stuck in a studio or you're in a room at home or somewhere, you don't meet people. And the quilting community, going to a regular workshop, coming to Festival of Quilts, things like that, is a chance to meet people and know that it's not just sitting alone at home, but there are other like-minded people. And the textile community is incredibly open with sharing its techniques and how they do things. Unlike some traditional artists who can be very secretive, if you ask a textile artist how they've done something, in 99.9 .9 cases, they'll say, oh yes, this is how I did it, secure in the knowledge that nobody will ever be able to replicate something identically. We all bring our own particular feature to a technique. So they're a very generous community, a very welcoming community, even to the odd man. It's creative, it's relaxing, and it allows a creative side to come out. Uh, a creative side which if somebody had asked me before I got into this area, because I trained as an accountant, so this is a long way from that, I'd have never believed that I would have that sort of side in me and it's opened my eyes when I go around walking in the countryside. You see things if you're involved in any form of art that you just wouldn't see without that artistic interest. It's not so much training, it's just an interest.